All right. We're going to make a uh, real easy agar. I learned this from PGT, Free Golden Teacher. But I want to make a series of videos, so I'm making this again just so I can have them in order and my friends can watch them one next to the other. This is more for my friends than anybody else. All right. So, what you need? Um, potato flakes for instant mashed potatoes any brand doesn't matter agar agar I use telephone brand because it's supposed to be good get it from Amazon or you can get it from a uh, Asian market then corn syrup um, Caro is one brand this is uh, great value um, ketchup cup or some small cup. This, I find these to be the perfect size. You'll see, and you need a scale that you know does grams and a spoon, and also food coloring. Um, I use blue. Never use green because mold is green, so. It, would, it could hide mold if you get it. Um, I like blue because it shows the mycelium, the white mycelium growing very well. So I like blue. Um, you don't have to use food coloring. It makes it look nicer. And also, we're going to use these PP5 containers from Amazon as well. They're very, very good. Um, for making this All right, so this is uh, <clears throat> Three Olden teachers three to one Agar recipe which is three grams of uh, potato flakes two grams of agar agar and one gram of corn syrup which you can also use um, honey or agave instead of the corn syrup. I like corn syrup because it's clear. Mm. Corn syrup is cheap. This will last you forever. All right, so let's start. So all you do turn on your scale. Wait for it to zero out. Put on your little cup. As you can see, it's a bit over two grams, so clear that out. And then we need three grams of potato flakes. Scoop them up, keep dumping it in till we get three grams. Try not to go over. Almost 280. Oh, went over. So here it's easy to take some out if you go over. That's fine. There we go. Perfect. Three grams. And uh, another thing is this doesn't have to be so exact. Uh, it's not going to kill anything. So here's the easy way to do it. You got three grams of potato flakes. Clear it out again, so now it's marking zero. So now we're not taking into account what we already put in, potato flakes. So now we start dumping in the, now here's the thing, I'm doing it with my left hand so I don't cover the uh, readout. And then I just start tapping it. This is very light, so you got to put in quite a bit to get to two grams. And I go around it, about one gram. Hey, there we go, two grams, beautiful. And then now, if you want, what I like to do is I make a little hole in here. 
for my um, corn syrup in. You'll see why in a second. So we clear this out again. Now we need only one gram of the corn syrup. And this part can get a little bit difficult. I'm gonna do it from here because I got the camera in the way. Let's see. With time you know about how much you need to put in. It's just a little, big little drop in there. And again, if you go over for a bit, just a bit, it's not, it's not bad. There you go. Got it spot on, one gram. So the reason I put this right in the middle is because when I dump it into the boiling water, I hold it and just dump it like that because I don't want this to stick to the edge and then lose some of it and then I don't get it all into the water. But you'll see that in a minute. So this is, this is your mix. Three grams of uh, potato flakes, two grams of agar agar, and one gram of sweetener, which in this case we're using corn syrup. You can use honey or agave. And then we're gonna boil some water and, uh, and mix it all up. Okay, so now we're gonna boil some water and the recipe calls for I'm doing a small recipe because I, I never need a lot of these so I'm, I usually go for half a cup of water which I don't know if you can tell but I'm going a, a little bit higher than half a cup because some of it is going to evaporate and again this doesn't have to be so incredibly accurate it's okay to get a little bit more, a little bit less of water, it's not gonna be a problem. So, pour it in, and wait for it to boil. It has to be boiling. When it boils, you throw the, your ingredients in that we have them right here. See the little blob or bead of corn syrup in the middle? And we got, we get our, uh, our, nice blue food coloring ready um because this happens pretty quick now you've noticed that none of this is actually sterile we're going to sterilize afterwards and this is what they call a no pour technique because what you're going to see later because instead of sterilizing the whole thing in a jar and then pouring it in in front of your airflow uh, hood or whatever um, or inside the, the sab or uh, steel air box instead of doing that we pour it out here and then we sterilize each each of these separate and you'll see in a bit so let's wait for this to boil and again I have my stuff right next to here ready Ready to go. Starting to boil. Get my spoon ready, because I'm I need to mix it real quick. Get my dry, pretty much dry ingredients. Dump them in. See, I got nothing left here. And then I put two drops of food coloring. Lift it off of the heat because I don't need to, you don't want it to overheat. Make sure you don't have any lumps. I got a little lump here. I need to flatten that out. Mix it in. It's going to turn into a gel. Make sure it's nice and mixed see that and then we're gonna pour it all right so first thing I do is I pour the whole thing back into the measuring cup
to make it easier on myself, not use this whole big old thing to pour. And then, I'm just going to show you with one, because I already made a bunch, so I'm not going to make more. This is for demonstration purposes. So you open this up, and you want to pour about a quarter of an inch. If you make it too thin, you're not giving it enough food to eat, the mycelium. So if you fill it too much, you're just wasting agar. It doesn't need that much. Now, if you were going to leave it in the fridge for a long time, you may want to make it real thick because then it'll have a lot of food to eat. All right, so we're going to pour about a quarter inch. Get it from the side. It's about good. This is about how deep you want it. I mean, you can go deeper if you want, pour in more if you want, but that's about what I like to do. And look at this nice blue color. So you don't have to cover it yet because then, oh, you get, well, it doesn't matter really because this is going to get a lot of uh, condensation. And we, again, this is, none of this is uh, sterile conditions at all because we're going to sterilize it in the pressure cooker, which I just use an instant pot. It works very, very well. Okay. So since this is going to go into the pressure cooker to sterilize, take a square piece of aluminum foil, cover this, then Cover it, leave it as close to the middle as we can. Now, I like, you want the vapor to go in and into it. So, first thing I do, this is, I close it but not really tight, just so it doesn't spill while I'm doing this. And then what I do is, I cut around it. And if you notice, I'm going a little bit under the lip, and then uh, I just cut all around it. Doesn't have to be pretty. Any scissors will work. It's just what I have. And then squeeze it around. See, I, I leave a little bit. I don't go around the bottom because I, I want to make sure that the the uh, vapor can get in. So before I put it in, I put a little pressure from the bottom up. Turn it. And then it's just a little bit. You need, you want this, listen, you want that little wiggle. It doesn't have to be too really loose, um, especially with this type of, see, so it just has to wiggle a little bit. That gives it space for the vapor to go in. Um, and you don't really need the aluminum. The aluminum is so the water doesn't fall on it and I don't know, but I like it. To, I don't know, it makes me feel good that it has a bit of aluminum as well, um, aluminum foil. And that's it, this is your, your, your thing. And this goes into the pressure cooker, in my case a Instapot. Instant Pot, Instapot, something like that. And you stack them one on top of the other, all around. On top, of course, not touching on the bottom, you will use one of these 
to lift it. So you fill it with water right up to here. You, you don't, since these are plastic, I don't like the water to even touch them. If they touch them just a little bit, that's fine, but not go over it because I, I don't want the water to seep in, just the vapor. So you, you wouldn't want it, the water to cover this, right? So when you fill it, I'll show you. They'll end up like that, a bunch of them. You can, you, with these, I can fit three all around and then all the way up. I can fill like, fit like three by six or seven. So I have two cups of water here. This is a, a two cup uh, measuring cup. And you fill it. It's still too low. It's not touching yet. I got two more cups of water here. Let's see how much it takes to get where I want it to. That's exactly where I want it. If you can see, it's touching the the grid, but it's not going over it. And that was a little bit over three quarters of a cup. So it, it, it's almost at one cup. But I always eyeball it, I never measure it. So this is exactly what you want. You want the water to not go over so it doesn't cover your agar cup. And that's it, you fill them up, you put it in here, and uh, put it in the uh, Instant Pot, cover it, and then just uh, you do pressure cook, remove the keep warm, make sure this is in high pressure. It, I think it defaults to high, but pressure cook, keep off, take off the keep warm. I don't have to show you that, it's just so simple. And then cover it. Let it go. Oh, and uh, the reason why don't, we don't keep it warm is because you want it to cool down. Let it cool down by itself. Be patient. It's going to take about half an hour, maybe more, after it's done to cool down by itself. And leave them there so that they, if you start messing with them, they'll splatter, splish, and splash all over the place when you take them out. So just leave them in there. If you take them out, you're, you're going to start splashing. And then when... Leave them till next day if you want. It doesn't matter. And it's, they're going to become solid. So then you can carry them and they, 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 they won't splash around. So after they cool down, you end up with these. And the, the great thing is, you don't need any of that wax tape or anything. Or micropore tape some people use. Because this is airtight. See, about a quarter of an inch, maybe. Maybe, yeah, about a quarter of an inch. And they are nice. You're going to end up with a lot of uh, condensation. You see water here. So what you do is, after they're dry, so they're not splashing anymore, you, you put them upside down. And in a couple of days, it'll... They'll be like this. You won't even see the uh, the water or condensation in there. It just dries up a bit at a time. And what I like to do is put them in one of these boxes. Amazon boxes, they fit perfectly. Look at that. Of course, uh, face down. And you can fit three layers, so 18 of them in here. And you can do this. I cut, you don't have to, I cut this off so that they fold easier. And that's it. Those are your homemade agar or agar cup.
Petri dishes. Beautiful.